Hello and welcome, my name is Amanda, and today I get to talk about my top 10 favorite movies from 2019. Uh, I saw 54 new releases this year in theaters, and um, I didn't have a good start to the year. Uh, I have done my worst of 2019, and if I've posted it, you'll see it linked somewhere. Uh, if I haven't posted it, it'll be my next video. Um, yeah, and that one I talk about the fact that, like, <laughs> I saw a lot of terrible things at the beginning of the year. Thankfully, middle of the year hit and it ended up being a great year for movies. So yeah, let's just jump right into my top 10 favorite movies from 2019. Coming in at number 10 is Shazam, which was really kind of the turning point for me. Uh, I didn't really know anything about the character or story before seeing it, except that it's obviously it's a superhero movie where a kid turns into a superhero. And that sounds cool, and it's got Zachary Levi, 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 I don't know, Zachary Levi in it. Um, I love him, and uh, yeah, I just, look, DC needed needed a couple of good films, uh, and I think that they, they did a good job this year. Shazam really kind of went back to DC roots of comic books. Comic books are supposed to be fun, Shazam is a fun character, and I recently rewatched Shazam and I think it it's gonna hold up really well. The kids in it are good and I like that there's kind of this heartwarming story about kids and kind of where they may be feeling disconnected in their personal lives and of course all the kids that are involved in this are foster kids so there's an added like emotional element to that but with all that none of it feels heavy-handed or in your face and it's a pretty traditional kind of uplifting family film and it doesn't really try to do anything in innovating or uh, like super artistic and that's okay because it does what it does really well. It's got great performances, it's fun, and like I said, I, I also like that the kids are not just like there and then disappear. Um, they're actually part of the story. So Shazam was a turning point for me in the year. It's why it's my number 10 favorite movie of 2019. Coming in at number nine is Richard Jewell, which is very different in tone from Shazam. Uh, I think that's kind of a good indicator of how 2019 went. There were some really fun movies that I went and saw that are gonna be on this list, and then there were things like Richard Jewell, which were really well made. Uh, Clint Eastwood is just an incredible director. He knows how to get the right performances from his actors. He knows how to pace a story. And this is an important story to talk about. I'm not gonna say too much about it because I just talked about it in my December wrap up, which if you missed, I will leave linked again, either up here or down below. Um, but yes, Richard Jewell is of course the story about uh, Richard Jewell and the Atlant Atlanta Olympic bombings in 1996, I believe. Uh, and then basically how Richard Jewell's life was destroyed by the media and the FBI. Uh, it's really good, it's a really good film. That's a really important story, and it's got great performances. If you haven't seen it, please see it, because it, it deserves to be seen. It's, it's really, really good, and that, of course, is why it's my number nine. Coming in at number eight is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Of course, there's a Tarantino movie out. It was probably gonna make my top ten list. I love Tarantino films. Uh, I don't think that they're always the best, but I always enjoy them, and a movie set in Hollywood in the late 60s written and directed by Tarantino, I mean, that's basically a movie made for me. Um, there is a little bit of alternate history kind of stuff, and that is always kind of fun to, to see, and you basically live out your, like, revenge fantasy, and that's, that's fun. But really, this movie is just about these two guys living in Hollywood at, at the time, and it's kind of a love letter to LA and Hollywood and the 60s and it's basically just two and a half hours hanging out with these guys and I'm okay with that. I know some people have complained about the pacing issues and that like it doesn't feel like much happens but I would argue that like in most Tarantino films nothing happens. It's all about being with the characters and he's got a lot of great actors in this and he gets even the ones in small parts get a little bit of a moment to shine and it's just it's just a cool film. I mean, like, it's just a vibe and it was fun watching it and 
I can't wait to watch it again. I really wanted to see it again in theaters and I missed my chance to see it. So now that I have the Blu-ray, I'm going to be watching it. But it's, it's my number eight favorite film of 2019 because, of course, Tarantino. And, uh, I mean, it's also a movie what, where you realize why Brad Pitt is a movie star because he is a presence on screen. Uh, he is an awesome presence on screen. Coming in at number seven is Jojo Rabbit, which uh, is interesting because... When I first saw it, I, I loved it. I thought it was, um, I thought it balanced the tone really well between uh, comedy and seriousness, and it felt very much like a, a I wouldn't say fantasy or fairy tale, but like somebody I think said fable, I could see that. Uh, and I think it's really hard to balance the kind of comedy that it has with the kind of seriousness that a World War II film requires. And it's done well. All the performances, again, most of the movies on my top ten list, it's the performances carry the whole film, and so that's another, this is another case where that happens. And um, I'm just thinking that I really like Taika Waititi as a, as a director. I mean, this was something that I had high hopes for and I went into not really sure what to expect. I came away loving it and being both happy and sad at the same time, so Jojo Rabbit was just wonderful. Coming in at number six is Yesterday, which was a film that I almost didn't see in theaters. Uh, I kind of almost missed my opportunity, and actually I tried to see it and uh, AMC switched the movie. Uh, I went and I think I actually went to a movie the day before and tried to print my ticket and it printed for The Lion King. I was like, that's not what I wanted to see. And they, and they said, oh, the movie got switched. And so it was like, instead of being a 7 p.m. show, it was a 9 p.m. show. And then I was like, I don't know, do I go see it? I went and saw it. I was so happy that I did. Uh, I like The Beatles. I wouldn't say that I'm like, I'm a super fan, but I mean, it's The Beatles. Who doesn't really like The Beatles? Um, and so I'm really glad that I saw it. It was really just a sweet film and there was there were a couple of moments in the film that I that kind of stayed with me and I won't spoil one of them but the other one was so the whole idea is that this guy wakes up and nobody remembers the Beatles or the Beatles didn't exist something happens and he ends up in a world where he knows about the Beatles but nobody else does and he's a musician so he starts playing their music and he becomes famous and, and everything and they're are a couple of people who remember the Beatles and they meet all at once and there's just this moment where he thinks that they're gonna be upset at him because he's stolen their work and they're just happy that somebody's playing the music because they said I thought I was the only one I'm so happy to hear the music again and that idea of music being able to connect people from very different walks of life and finding a shared common bond that way and then the idea that somebody would have that and then like the world would just forget is just heartbreaking there's it's just a really sweet moment between these characters and it's one of the reasons that the movie kind of stuck with me because i just went yeah that's what music does it connects people and the beatles connected people on a massive level and they're really important and so i can't imagine a world without them I am so happy that I got to see Yesterday because obviously it's now in my top 10 of 2019. So Yesterday was wonderful. I loved it. And coming in at number five is Joker, which is going to feel kind of odd uh, after just talking about Yesterday. And um, the next movie on my list is going to make it feel a little bit odder because Joker was... I know that a lot of people didn't like it. I, again, I'll say I'm not a huge comic book person. I like comic book movies. I like the Joker. I mean, I guess as a character, I don't really have any attachment to him, but I do like Walking Phoenix. And I just, coming away from this movie, I had a lot of mixed emotions. And I think I was just really blown away by the topics it chose to discuss and how it talked about them and I think it's I think it's well made I think it's well acted I think it's shot in an interesting way kind of gritty but also kind of clean um, and 
but mostly I just think it's it's the commentary. Uh, that's why it's on my, my list because it comments on kind of celebrity culture but definitely the like celebrity culture that's kind of put on criminals and the obsession with criminality and the media's obsession with criminality and also mental health and problems with that and kind of the the way that the system works and so it's just like I said it's the commentary it's it's what it has to say that makes it one of my top ten and makes it my number five because I like I said I just came away from it thinking about a lot of things and I'm still thinking about them months later I know that not everybody liked it I wouldn't even necessarily say that I enjoyed the film but it was it was a film that stuck with me and made an impact and it was an experience that like I said I'm thinking about months later so yeah I and I think it's a I think it's a well done film I don't think that it's uh I don't think that it just sits there and expects you to take everything at face value. I think it challenges its audience. Um, so yeah, uh, Joker, kind of a, a lot to, to think about and a good film, so that's why it's my number five. Coming in at number four is The Peanut Butter Falcon, which, like I said, is gonna sound a little weird after talking about Joker. Um, this was the opposite experience that Joker was. Uh, I came out of Joker kind of depressed and contemplative and came out of Peanut Butter Falcon just the huge smile on my face. This is a, like the feel-good movie of the year um, and uh, again more great performances. Like I said everything on this list basically the performances made it uh, and you know it's just about these kind of mismatched characters going along on their uh, adventure together. Shia LaBeouf kind of shines in this and I just, I mean, sometimes you just need a movie that's really just a sweet story about good people, eh, people who want to be good, uh, and again, just kind of small scale film, good actors, good performances, and like I said, just, I came out of the film with such a big smile on my face. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend it because it's it's just wonderful. Everybody in it is good and it's like I said just kind of a little bit more simple and traditional in its storytelling and sometimes that's okay. If you just make a good film about a good story, that's enough. And so yeah, that's why Peanut Butter Falcon is my number four. Coming in at my number three is Rocket Man. Uh, yeah, this movie was pretty high up on my list uh, since I saw it. I'm a Taron Egerton fan. I'm not necessarily an Elton John fan, um, just because I don't think I've heard a lot of his music, but I love Taron Egerton. I uh, love musicals, and uh, Dex Fletcher, I think, is the director. He did, uh, oh my gosh, what was that movie he did with Hugh Jackman and Taron Egerton that I love? Um, Eddie the Eagle, oh my gosh, and it's on my shelf somewhere. Uh, from a couple years ago that I absolutely love. So I, I was really looking forward to this film. It's a biopic about a musician that is done as a musical and it's kind of creative in its approach and that's great because that's how something like this should be done because so many biopics are done in a very traditional way and come off feeling stiff and if you don't really have a really strong performance won't carry through. Thankfully this is kind of got a little bit of an innovative way of approaching the story. It's got music, so there are musical numbers, and it's got a great performer at the center of the film, and all of the supporting cast are great. So yeah, this came out I think in February, and it's been on in my top 10 ever since because it's just wonderful. So yeah, Rocket Man, my number three. Coming in at number two is Wild Rose, which I love and it was my number one film for the longest time until I saw my number one film which I will talk about in a sec. But Wild Rose tells the story of a Glasgow girl who wants to be a country singer in Nashville. Do you need more than that? Uh, it's got great music. Jessie Buckley is uh, Rose and uh, I think Rose Lynn I think is her name uh, and 
she's amazing. She's the one that should be getting the best actor, best acting award in this year's Oscars, but I don't think that she's going to because the Academy sucks and um, yeah. But my hope is that maybe the song from the film will at least get nominated because it's just wonderful and I literally am watching it in the theater sobbing. It's a story of redemption, it's a story about country music and Glasgow uh, with great performances. I don't know what else you need. If you haven't seen it, watch it because it's, it's just amazing and um, and I've been listening to the soundtrack ever since. So yeah, Wild Rose was my number one. Um, still one of the best movies that I've seen all year. It's my number two favorite movie of 2019. And coming in at number one is 1917. Uh, I saw this just recently. It's actually the last movie I saw in 2019, I think. And I always wait to do my top 10 list until after I've seen everything, you know, or until I know that I'm not going to see anything else during the year because of this reason. Um, this movie is great. It's shot in a really interesting way. Again, great performances, great tension building. Just, I can't, I can't, I can't even describe it because I'm like, it's just so good. Um, I talked about it in my December wrap-up, so if you want to hear more about that, check that out because I spent a whole bunch of time talking about it, but absolutely great experience, loved it. It's, I mean, it's not a happy movie, but it's so well made, it's so good. 1917 is my favorite movie of 2019. Okay, so that's it. That's my list. Um, like I said, I didn't want to talk about them too much because I've talked about them in my wrap-ups. Um, but basically these are just the best experiences that I had with movies this year. Most of it, like I said, is because of performances, but also really great storytelling. Um, so yeah, if you liked what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to see more. I talk about books and movies on this channel, so if that's something that sounds interesting to you, click subscribe and comment down below on your thoughts on any of these movies or what some of your favorite movies of 2019 were, and I'll see you next time. Bye.